Okay, welcome to the introduction to Cinema 4D series where uh, with this video, we are gonna just go over the very, very basics and that is the user interface. Uh, now it may seem very daunting at first with all the different icons and, and menus and buttons and things like that. But uh, what you'll see is over time, the more you use this program, the more comfortable you will get. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive in. Okay. So when we start up Cinema 4D, you should see something like this. And like I said, this can be a bit overwhelming. Uh, one of the things I'm going to say quite frequently is I'll talk more about this later on, since there is so much here that, uh, you know, it's impossible to cram everything into one video. But this is the first video that just goes over the, the absolute basics here. And let's start at the very top. At the top, we have our file name. Now we have the ability in Cinema 4D to have multiple files open. Uh, so if nothing's different in them, it, it'll just overwrite it. But if I just add an object really quick, you can then see I can have multiple files. And that's something that's pretty unique and special uh, about Cinema 4D. Right underneath that, we have our basic menu system that if you've used any kind of program, uh, you might be familiar with where we have our file menu uh, with operations like opening, closing, as well as saving, edit, cut and copying. Honestly, pretty much everything you want to do in Cinema 4D can be found in these menus. And what you'll see is that the most important things or the most common things we do has those same elements, but placed around our user interface for easier interaction. Now, uh, taking it a step further, rather than trying to find everything in menus or use specific, um, find the specific tool in our user interface, you will see if you hover over something, it will show you a shortcut key. And shortcut keys can be very, very helpful and important, especially when it comes to the navigation selection um, in basic tools, which I'll talk more about here very soon. But that is um, what we uh, want to try and do as we're learning a new program is to incorporate as many of these different um, shortcut keys as possible. And like I said, you can hover over different ones. And if there is a shortcut key, uh, it will tell you. You can also pull up the shortcut key list and, and search for them that way. But we don't need to worry about that right now. Let's start by going down the left-hand side here. We first have our commander, which allows us to pull up different commands. And so if you type them in, not only will you see a list of those commands, but also the shortcut keys, like I mentioned previously. So this is another place you can find out different shortcut keys and different um, commands. Beneath that, we have our selection tool. Okay, our main selection tools. Uh, and what you'll see is if you ever see an icon um, or, or tool here that has that little tick, that little triangle in the bottom right hand corner, that means there's more options here if you left click and hold, All right? And so you'll see we have not just one selection tool in here, but several selection tools. And we'll talk more about these a bit later. Okay, but moving on, um, we have our, uh, move, rotate, and scale tools, some of the most common tools we use in Cinema 4D, and probably some of the most important shortcut keys to remember. So we'll come back and talk about these more, but move is E, rotate is R, and scale is T. Uh, these are our placement tools. We won't get into them for a while, but really this whole set here of tools beneath our move, rotate, and scale um, is dynamic. And so depending on what mode we are in, uh, will it will show us different options here. And so currently, because we are in the mode we're in, I'll get to that here shortly, we have some of our spline tools, um, as well as some other creation tools. Okay. Going across, we have one of our hot corners, which I'll come back to. We have some axis locks, as well as a coordinate system toggle, um, which we'll dive into as well. Um, I really want to get to our different modes though, uh, where in Cinema 4D, you have different modes you're working in. And these are more important as you get more into modeling and, and modifying objects, but we can work with our objects in point mode, in edge mode, in polygon mode. Now we are currently in model mode, but if you left click and hold, you'll notice there are even more options, which we will discuss. Aside from that, we also have texture mode. We have our axis modification, which is similar to working with the um, anchor point, if you're familiar with the Adobe applications. And then we have some other just kind of common and useful tools that we might use relatively frequently, such as snap settings, such as working with our work plane, which is you know our grid here. Um, we have our soft selection settings, 
some symmetry settings, which are new to 2023. And lastly, the ability to solo objects. So, you know, in my opinion, depending on the type of monitor you're working on, of course, knowing the uh, shortcut keys for your selection tools, as well as your move, rotate, and scale tools um, are the most important um, alongside navigation since they are so far away from kind of the right-hand side here where we will spend the majority of our time. On, uh, on top of that, I would say a lot of your modes here as well because you know, really as we're selecting things, we'll be spending a lot of time in this section here. And so the less we have to do to move our mouse over to get to our modes or different tools, the better off we will be. We now have our different render um, options or, or things we can do render-wise when we want to create a final image, whether it's rendering a specific view, um, which is this view here, rendering to our picture viewer, which is a separate window, or opening up the render settings. Okay, we have another hot corner, which I will come back to. Uh, this one, though, is our material manager. We uh, next have what I call our object palette, where we can come in, object slash create palette, where we can create um, all the different you know, types of objects in Cinema 4D. And much like in other tools, you will see a lot of these have that little triangle in the bottom right-hand corner. So if you left click and hold, you can see we have different options. There are a lot of different objects in Cinema 4D, everything from geometry to generators to deformers and effectors, fields, as well as cameras, lights, and other things. So we'll obviously dive into this as well. We then have the object manager, which will show you all of the different objects you've created in your scene. And in my opinion, it's the easiest to select objects from here. And so it's very important to keep this organized. Uh, ho hopefully you can imagine if we have a lot of different objects that we can fill this up quite quickly and finding what we want is very important. We also have takes, but we don't need to worry about those. Um, what is kind of worth mentioning though, is that uh, you'll see in a couple of different places in Cinema 4D that we have different tabs. And in fact, we can create those tabs um, if we do want to dive into customizing our user interface. Um, and in fact, we even have some specific user interface um, uh, layouts already created for us. Okay. If I just click on the cube that I created just by clicking right on our cube object, uh, I will see its attributes. And this is our attribute manager, which shows us all of the different properties of an object. And there's several different types or kinds of properties, which we'll dive into more. Um, really the two most important ones would be the object tab, which has specific object pro properties for whatever kind of object we've created, as well as the coordinate tab, which is where we can um, work with the position, rotation, and scale of an object. Okay. This big thing here is our perspective view. It is our window into our 3D world. Um, I will go over how to navigate this um, in the next video. But for right now, know that this is where we see the objects we've created. We work with them. We navigate. And this is kind of the, uh, our most important space here. And the thing that tells us the most about our scene um, as we're creating it. Beneath that, we have our playback controls as well as some animation controls that um, are other methods for creating keyframes and what we want to create keyframes on. Um, I'm being a little bit vague here because these are so specific and we will talk about those more in the animation section. Uh, beneath that, we have our frame range, okay? So it's kind of like a, a very condensed timeline where you can do some basic um, adjustments to animation. And we have our playhead here as well. Beneath that, we have our preview range, which allows us to see a specific part of our timeline or frame range. And the other hot corner we have here is our expanded timeline. I did forget one hot corner, and that is our coordinate manager, which we will come back to. Okay, so let's also cover the hot corners before wrapping up this video. Um, we have our asset browser, which is a great way to find assets that you want to work with or incorpor incorporate into a project. I also think as we're just starting out, it's a great way to find things that we can use to allow us to focus on other elements of a project. So for instance, if we want to, um, you know, uh, uh, let's see, not worry about materials, okay, we can apply the pre-made materials here. If we want to worry about materials and, um, you know, try and put a scene together, well, then we can find some objects here we want 
and then make the materials ourselves, change things up, use it to populate a scene, whatever we want to do. There's all sorts of different types of things in our asset browser, all types of assets from objects to materials to different nodes, textures, and we'll dive into these um, more later on. The other, or another hot corner, is our material manager. And this is where all the materials in our um, scene are located. It's where we can create them, work with them, and um, begin to start modifying them. You hit the plus sign, you will get a material, and if you select it, you will see it in your attribute manager. All right? And then when we're done working there, we can click on it again to collapse it. We have our coordinate manager, um, which shows the specific coordinates, um, rotation values, as well as size of an object. And we'll see more about this later and what differentiates it from, say, you know, the coordinate tab here. Um, because there are some differences, but for right now, we can just collapse that and move on. Lastly, we have our timeline. Okay, now it doesn't look like much right now. We typically want to move this a little bit further up, especially if we have more elements animated in our scene. Uh, our timeline gives us a more detailed view of what elements we've or objects we've animated. And we can then come in here with those animated elements and work with those keyframes, their curves, interpolation, and all of that good stuff. So that will do it for this video. I promise the next video will dive in to more uh, of the user interface. We'll actually start using it. But I also wanted to mention that one of the most important things with learning a program like Cinema 4D is to use it as much as you can, to explore it as much as you can, really to get good at a program like Cinema 4D or really uh, any other production tool for that matter, is to know where everything is and to know what everything does. And you know, if that sounds overwhelming, don't worry about it. You don't have to learn everything at once. But the more you use this, the more you'll remember, uh, the easier it will be to find objects. And eventually you will learn kind of how Cinema 4D wants you to work, the order we need to do things, the, the way we do things, and all of that just comes with practice. So my biggest piece of advice is one, take a deep breath, relax, and two, spend as much time as you can in um, Cinema 4D working. So that'll do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see or if you have any questions, please let me know.